crack on. And um, I just want to give you all a, a little bit of an introduction uh, to our member who's doing a spotlight session today. It is uh, Mr. Scott Campbell from uh, Success Raw. Scott, could you unmute yourself for a second, please? There you go. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. And um, welcome to the, the, the meeting, Scott. Do appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Scott Campbell, for those, uh, you will hear a bit more about what Scott does as a business, but you'll be able to get a much deeper insight beforehand through this uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, Spotlight member session. Um, Scott's going to be talking to us about the three critical factors of marketing online in this current climate. So for those of you that are a little bit uncertain as to what you should be doing in terms of marketing, uh, I know I've spoken to a lot of people who kind of, their, 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 their thought pattern is, well, nobody's doing any business, so we just need to go completely quiet, save costs on our marketing spend, or just you know, use this time to reflect. And that's fine. You know, you're welcome. Each person is in, the, in a different uh, headspace with all of this at the moment, um, and so each to their own. My personal opinion is we should be communicating, marketing, and speaking to as many people more so than ever right now, because at the end of the day, we're going to come out the end of this and we need to stay top of mind. And the only way to stop of mind is be stay top of mind is to be visible. So, um, Scott, uh, whenever you're ready, you can proceed. Okay, cool. I didn't think I was going to go first. I thought the spotlight was going to be at the end. So yeah, caught me on the off. Uh, you see... That's why I asked you to be prepared, Scott. Okay, um, I've got I've got some slides, so only a couple, and it's, I'm gonna gonna make it as sort of brief and to the point as possible. Um, I want to open up more Q and A's, but obviously I'm quite aware you don't want to hear me rabbiting on for about 15 minutes and uh, just going on, especially about the uh, everyone muted without the banter coming back. It'd probably be uh, seem longer. So let me just uh, if I can. Well, can you see, we'll see the slides. Got a couple of just thumbs up. If you see the slides, yep, yeah, seeing your slide there. Go for it. <coughs> cool. So, yeah, as Mark says, just really about the the three critical factors really at this moment. Um, and and for me, anyone who wants to know what I do, um, I pretty much we pivot at the moment, going back to how I started my original business, which is showing people how to market and sell online. And it's a completely different environment than what been used to most of us are used to going out and networking and have face-to-face -face meetings and build a bit of trust you just can build a bit of trust by how you feel your initial reaction with someone and obviously it's a lot more difficult nowadays um, but the there is kind of some some really poor ways I've seen a lot of people trying to adapt by promoting themselves online at the moment and there's um, there's a few poor ways so I've been doing a lot of content around the best way to actually just market and sell online and particularly in a recession current, um, which is pretty much what we're in really at the moment. Um, completely different world. The, the, and, you know, I think um, it's Keith, was it, it said about the changing, you know, how they're changing up, how they're, you know, delivering. And a lot of people are changing how they're delivering and the new normal is going to be different than what the old normal was, even when we go back to normal, if that makes sense. So, um, so there's, a, there's a few air critical areas, but, those of you who don't know me, it's few on the I can see on here that know me quite well, but the um, I'm, a, I'm a, a marketing strategist basically, and um, generated over thirty million pounds worth of business for my clients in the last ten years. But more importantly, my first business that I built, um, and my first successful business when I come out and started on my own, which was banging the last recession, um, I did that purely through online methods. And Facebook was only a couple of years old; it was only about three or four years old then. LinkedIn wasn't what it is now. So it's actually a lot easier now than what it was then. Um, but what I have gone back is looked at all the stuff we used to do then with the forums and stuff and how to quickly. The good thing is about where we're at, at the moment. It's always a level playing field where the, the gurus and all the big names, if you like, in any industry where they've kind of already got a bit of um, sort of thought leadership in any of our areas, whether you're, you know, a, plumbing area like Ben or promotional stuff like Steve, you know, any area um, it's kind of a level playing field at the moment. So it's a really good opportunity now to really cement 
um, your marketing and carry on doing it, particularly in an online uh, format. So there's only three. So the first one really now, we all hear this a lot about who is your ideal client and and the marketing people on here will know that when we ask that question, we get a whole array of answers from everyone. And anyone that says everyone gets a slap straight away. Slap yourself around the face if you say everyone. Um, but where, the, where it's really important in these times is to really understand about who is now your ideal client. And in terms of psychographics rather than demographics, because the demographics area has changed quite a bit. So um, it's interesting since this, we've been in this period of lockdown that, I've had a lot more business from America and India and stuff like that. Their demographics have seemed to have gone out of the window a little bit and people are not that wary about it because they just go, oh, it's all online. But what I mean by psych, if people don't understand them, the difference between psychographics and demographics. So demographics is obviously, you know, where people live, age and stuff like that. Psychographics is more about what they are, where their headspace is at the moment and what sort of things they're looking at. And so your if you take a an, a strategy session I had yesterday with um, with a beauty consultant, their headspace is completely different now around the psychographic. So, where they are, they are they are niche down was people that were local because of the shop to get people into the shop. So it was a very much then the ideal client was people that are local and females of a certain age. Now it's more turned into they've got products to sell online because they've got actually a warehouse full of stock and stuff like that. So they're doing really well in terms of selling their stock online, but now they are ideal client has changed in terms of the psychographics of them people that want to do it at home and do it themselves. So they much more become an educational one around the products rather than the actual applying the products because obviously they can't do it in these circumstances. So really have a think down now about who is your, who is now your ideal client and whether that's changed. Me personally, mine's changed because where we was specifically just aiming at technology companies and startups, now it's changed because it's just people that have got something online to sell. So if someone's got an online product they can sell and they don't know how to set their talking about how do I sell my products online? So that's a psychographic, but now that's a different now of who my ideal client is than what it was prior to this situation that we're currently in. The second one is the, um, that I talk about big message and I saw Phil was on the, uh, on here somewhere can't i can only see five cameras now so i can't see all the cameras but um the uh but talking about the big message so i talk about this in my videos a lot around your big message and your big message is simply if you think about when we're having these calls now and online and you're in these virtual meetings it, you've got to really get get across what it, you do in a very short space of time and the best way to do it at the moment is everyone is asking for something at the moment in these online things everyone online is always asking for stuff you know can you recommend someone that does this or how do i do this and it's all everyone and when we go into this environment in an online it's very much people asking for stuff so the thing that i do the exercise i do with my clients is we look at what are the three things that your ideal clients are asking for at this stage and if you can discover them three things are then what happens is is people really kind of get you straight away and go oh actually that's really handy that's exactly what i need um, and then what you do is your big message in terms of where you're marketing to and saying, rather than putting out offers, 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 you can go, right, we just help you with these three things. And, uh, and if you look at when we're doing the tech stuff, or even with the, um, the online setting tool we've got with the Simple Funnel Creator, the three things we've got around that are literally that it, it kind of does the setting for you, does the lead generation for you, and it turns your leads into prospects. And these are all people about and helps you sell that online without you getting involved. And it's all the things that then people are actually asking for at the moment that they want their tools to do. So it's a really good exercise to look at kind of, and even, even if you've got the, um, even if you've got clients that um, at the moment that, that have changed as well of how they're thinking and how they're delivering their products or services online, It'd be worth asking them, saying, actually, what are your three things now that you really need help with? Because it could be different than what you was helping them with initially. You know, and, and you know, it's just take it like, you know, the the biggest one if you're in a very sort of domestic things like Ben's on here with the plumbing and stuff like that. The things that people are asking for now are a lot different. So it'd be more of how can I fix that at home? Because the 
because I don't know about you guys and but you know all of a sudden I've got a whole list of jobs that I've got to do around the house that I didn't have before <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I've been using YouTube and the how to YouTube and everything has been my my default at the moment how to do this because I go well, okay I've got to do it now so uh, how do I do that so have a look at it's all but people start with asking questions so the three things that your clients are actually asking for now rather than what they were before and it could be different and the third thing, and this is really about how you get yourself out there. So there's so much, so much, so much noise around at the moment. There's information about everything and everything. And it's, and it's come to sometimes you get a bit of, oh, and you go down a rabbit hole with stuff. You know, I started looking the other day about, um, about how Sweden were dealing with the coronavirus, you know, and then two hours later I realised, you know, oh, bloody hell, I've gone down a rabbit hole of loads of information and just like, oh, I need to go and have a rest now. So there's so much stuff out there. So where you really can make an impact at the moment and in whatever you do, and if you think about going, going back to what questions people are asking, that's the sort of content you should be doing. You know, think about what they're asking, do little short videos, include, you know, with like questions and answers um, to, to them questions that people are having. But your personal branding at this stage is what's going to win through a marketing because it's difficult for people to buy, you know, just a bit of feeling of meat because we can't meet up with each other. So how you come across in, in these virtu virtual things and how you come across with your content is really important. So you just got to consider yourself, whoever you are, whoever becoming the personal branding is going because now we're seeing the likes of people we couldn't get hold of before people like Bill Gates, for example, just in their home, the same as us on a, on a Zoom call with the same background in the kitchen or the bedroom or whatever it is where we've made our home offices. So getting out there now and just being, people will connect with your voice more. So just think of yourself as a personal brand and then just start putting out really varied short content. So whether it's images, whether it's just short text, whether it's videos, whether it's doing a live video every so often just to share what your thoughts are in your industry stuff like that which but keep it really short that people can actually consume it really quickly um and then the other one that, that doesn't get to anywhere that i it's a big winner for me is that i talk about giving value through commenting so when you see people actually um making comments so, so when we see people so things as they might say someone might put on a on a group Oh, we need a website built, built, you know, and that's it. Oh, I need a new website. And instead of Mark going and thinking, right, okay, I can go and do a set. Mark won't do this because he's pretty good, but you'll see a lot of people go, oh, we can do that for you. We can do that. Blah, blah, blah. We're, we're going to charge this. Give us a call here. We'll do it for you. And everyone comments trying to sell rather than going, actually, how can I give some value to this person that's just asked that question? And I would say that most of my leads that I pick up online for me and for my clients is, is, go, is doing this giving value through commenting because rather than being the one that tries to sell in that area, you could ask a question going, well, what sort of budget have you got? What type of website are you looking for? Um, just to, you know, just be aware there's a lot of different options and a lot of different people, you know, so just giving a bit of value content and asking some questions will make you stand out as that person going, well, actually they know more of they're talking about, I think. And it's interesting that, um, and even on there, when you're doing value through comments, then instead of adding a link to your website, um, do so like a Candly link, which is free to do. So if you go to candly.com, I don't know if you're on that, aren't you, Mark? Or? If I put, um, I'll put it in the chat box in a bit. But if you go to calendly.link.com, uh, I'm probably missing out the referral link. Oh, no, it's not that. Ignore that one. What's that for booking uh, uh, an online meeting? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's that second one there, Calendly. Thing. So if you go on there, so you can, it's free to use. You can set up a like where people can book you. So what you can do is you can put a bit of value on the comment and then just say, oh, if you want to chat, here's my online booking. Now, what you'll get from that is, and I get very, I would say probably eight times out of ten, the person who actually made the post is not the one that actually ends up booking a call. Because no. you, you, what you've got online is, forget about likes, shares, and all that. You don't know how many people have seen that comment or seen your content. So three minutes, really Scott. Three minutes, yeah. Yeah. So it's really, really valuable. So 
I always give it, give it a bit of value through commenting rather than trying to sell and then give a link, put a link on there for your calendar link where people can book a call. And then, uh, and that's pretty much it really. So that's the three things to so share value through giving really short micro content. Um, I'll go back on here. Your big message, what are your three people asking for? Really important at the moment. And has your ideal client changed now in terms of what they're looking for and what services they need rather than what it was before?